Yep. How is your sex life is the question. How could you possibly think about it? Look at Germany. They don't have only little kids or few kids in comparison to other countries. I'm intending to find the Blanqui because of their strategic planning. It's because there are many reasons, but one of the good reasons is in Germany, you simply just don't want to take off your clothes. Put them back on. Because it's too cold. It's just not that inviting. Even with heaters inside. And then there's something else, let alone the people who are really cold. They're not only cold. That is what it takes to live the, like say, industrial revolution that started modernism. I haven't finished that idea either. But what it brought to us is industrializing our life. And that means we have factories, we have mass productions, we have manufacturers, we have, and all that pulled into technologies, which are, you know, how we move, how we drive, how we live, how we build the houses, how we construct anything. So in order to do that, we have to obey instructions which no one understands in the global thing. You just follow step by step. I'm not talking oligarchy right now. I mean, these are subjects. It's like everything ever written in the world. How long is it going to take to disclose everything to you? So just bear with me. So I can point you out what is important at this moment. So in order to f achieve these, to not to be militarized, Germany is one of those places where you're not really militarized, but on the other hand, you must, because if you don't read the instructions, it doesn't work. You here can read the instructions and it doesn't really matter. You can eat them anyway, so, so I'm out. I don't like them instructions, look, so I'm out. Pew. Again. Pew. But when you, <laughs> go ahead, take a moment. But when you build a bridge, you have to. And that means that you have to be very focused and very concentrated. And then there comes the idea of, and that comes from the Industrial Revolution, in order for you to maintain your job, which would be 18 hours, maybe 16, but seriously, uh, no joke. You had to be, you had, had no distraction. So the fear of losing your job, because that's part of capitalism. The capitalism is really not about abundance or rich. It's not about rich uh, uh, a civilization or the continent. No, it is about exploitation. Because when only 1% is wealthy or rich, how do you call that then? The only way you can conceive to have people obedient to something which doesn't really work well is by having an in induced fear. So when God finally came and took that fear off you guys, in the beginning of the 20th century, that is 1900 and stuff, stuff, stuff. Remember when we said 20s, now we're in the 21st. Then what they did is they invented something, which is something what they cannot really prove, but you can also not disapprove of it because if you disapprove of it, then you're going to be fired from your life. You're fired from your life, meaning you're not getting a job, you can't pay a mortgage, you can't have a house, you have no address, you can't get nothing. And that means McCarthyism. Someone said, like, the thing against communism. The idea behind this, don't ask questions. No question, ask, obey. And if that doesn't work out, we'll be pulled the trigger and put more crisis in it. So then you're even more afraid because you just saw like 20,000 or 20 million people just lost their jobs. And we'll never get it again because now they give you also the instructions. There's overpopulation. How many architects can we have coming out of school every year? And how many more buildings? Everybody wants to build a tall building, memorable. How many architects in the whole wide world every year coming out? And how many buildings can you have? Like, let's say Manhattan. I mean, it's already done. So what, what do you do? So modern is questionable in a way in which it got dehumanized. And this is the only thing what Marx ever said. Marx didn't say, don't be modern. Marx never said, oh, we don't want to have an iPhone. Oh, it's the contrary. Marx didn't talk about that yet because it wasn't relevant at the time. What is relevant is the other thing what capitalism gives you, and here are coming to a conclusion right now, which is the dehumanization of the human itself. Not only that you have to compete with other people against jobs, but also have to compete with yourself. And that's like the largest thing ever. I lived that in Mount Bones. I grew up there in Germany. You constantly have to live against what you want. Because that's what they said in Germany. Um, 
money doesn't grow on trees. It's not all what you want. You got to be disciplined. Shut up. I think in America, they call it stiff mouth. If you have feel emotion, you don't have time for emotion. Especially when you're an engineer, you shouldn't have emotion. Not you're an emotional person. That's a negative thing in modernism and in, in capitalism and industrialized thing. So pulling the whole building down again, tumbling it down. So many people, uh, the message arrived in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and then 90s, and I don't know, so forth. And they thought, oh, cool, now I can, I can throw a towel, which is not English, right? I don't have to do it. I'm just going to go smoke dope and be off. Well, that's not the idea behind. Then you're exactly as dead, but you're exactly as unproductive. What the? Easier. You smoked up because then the system in Germany it doesn't have to pay for you. Because you're unemployed for, for always. See, I'm not even addressing my points of modernism. Modernism meant, you know, and then postmodernism meant, and then post postmodernism didn't exist yet. Someone named me that way in a book. He, he wrote a book. He said he wrote, wrote a book. <laughs> He only translated a book from me. <laughs> I didn't know that. But anyway, he, he got a little niche in the market of intellectuality by translating a book from a different language, from Portuguese to Mexican, Spanish. Uh, Ferdinand Pessoa. He wrote it in the book, so here you go. I didn't know at the time what he meant by Pessoa's modern. I, I barely met those, the, the group of people, so... Um... I, I didn't ask, it didn't matter, because sometimes you just let the things sink in. Because sometimes Ben gives you a sentence and you don't understand what the meaning is. As you will notice when you stop seeing the videos of this date, 52, how many new ideas you got in your head just because a little insight got put into whoever is listening, if, if any at all. So very nicely described that people would go. So in the beginning of the 20th century, in schools and at least in Germany, people would line up and you know students had to line up and, um, and wait for the classes you know to enter the classes. So there would be 10 minutes of exercise. They would jump up and down, do a little stretching, basic general warm ups. No special clothing needed. Now that was called aerobics eventually in the 80s, putting in fashion on. And then people would actually do that in their own homes in front of a TV. And sometimes they would invite other people. And then some had already learned. So he or she, probably a she, would go or a he, she, would go and, and be the instructor. And they did that in order to... And that's the difference between modernism and postmodernism. One did it because they would like to impress another. I like to impress you now, so I built my body so you can like me because I'm now cool. And the other one did it to impress themselves. It's a huge difference. So what my friend or colleague or whoever you call it, I don't know, I barely met those people. They were like a little group of people. I barely did. So I don't... So what he did, I don't want to talk about Andres. What's his name again? See, I... Okay, so... All right. In Mexico, the studies are higher in intellectuality than it is almost anywhere in the world. Because, as, as I said, they have to follow study, study plans. And within that study plan, a good example, I don't know if it is, in India they say that to become a doctor in India, you can you only, you only have so much time because as we are in India, we need doctors, so hurry up. And in the States, they, said they have like so long, in order to become a doctor. It's like, usually it's university is about four years. Mine took like longer, five. And a doctor is supposed to take like eight years or so. It's like one of the longest studies ever because you also have to have two years of um, practice without being actually paid or really paid or have any recognition. So in the Indian set, it's a real, but it makes sense. I, be I believe him. I don't know if I trust it, but it makes sense. But the idea, I think, is very, very to the point, and I'm going to get to that too. It's because he said, we need doctors, so hurry up. So he said, we have to study the same material the Americans have. I'm talking Americans, uh, North Americans, the United States Americans. We have to do the same instead of eight years or six years. We have to do it in two years. And I believe him. 
in Mexico, of course, I'm not talking about doctor, but there's many professions. People just do. They have no, they have no further knowledge. They have no studies. They have no diploma. They have no degree. In Germany, there's another way. Without degree, you can't do anything. You can't teach a word. You're not allowed to teach one word in another language in Germany without a diploma, a degree. And in Mexico, you can do anything without degree. But the situation is often, and I'm not talking about medical doctors right now, because that doesn't apply there. Or engineers who build bridges, it doesn't apply. But often, when people end their, their studies four years, five years, they don't have any idea what they actually studied and they don't know how to apply that in their daily life because what's missing is that they made a connection. Because that's what university mostly don't tell you. Now, in Germany, university, I told you, it's like very, very few, like 2% or 4% who study there. The rest, they have these studies, which is half theory and the other half praxis, so much more convenient. But it's only helping and purposeful for items, for producing stuff like Mercedes Benz or machinery or anything. So do you understand that I'm not saying one is better than the other? Or you should or you should not have a degree. I'm not saying it. I like the openness of Mexico, but only when you do it right. But there's stuff you cannot do if you don't do it right. And often, and that's my critique right now, and it's actually a positive critique because it's a negative critique. What is positive? What is negative? It's, it's good to mention it because you can see what's not working so we can find a better way. That's all I ever did my whole life. Everywhere. Everywhere. That's all I ever do. Point things out so you can find the best for everyone. The global thing. The critique is that... You can't rely on a diploma and exam and not know what to do. And you cannot just do stuff without knowing. But the idea of Mexico opposite to Germany is not alone now in this very moment, industrialized opposite to Catholic, because there are two very special countries which are very different. Germany within the industrialized countries is different than any country and Mexico within the Catholic is different than any other. So they have special things going on. And that is the problem and the opposing forces of those is that Germans are stoic. That's what you say a Taurus is. They just walk and doesn't look boom, 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 which is not really true in the astrology sign. But it is in the idea of Germans. They just have to go this. They have to push their way through. And there's no other way ever. And they're so used that things go well that they never stop and never look. And in Mexico, nothing works. So Mexicans always go. They always look to the look. They look, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? And there's a hole in it, there's a bache, a little puddle in the street, careful with the car, careful what's going on. They're always attentive, always attentive. And in Germany, then something doesn't work. That's why, I, I, that's why the Fahrauf unfälle. They just bump into things because, and the outrage and stuff doesn't work because it scatters their whole existence. Their breakdown is people. They literally break down, they can't handle a thing. So that's why they're all pussies in terms of personality but they're great in terms of what they do what do i wish to achieve i wish you to get inside i wish you to not glorify any i wish you to subtract or extract what is what you consider is right and i'm gonna do what i can and that was, if if it's up to me i'd say we take the best of the best i loathe living in germany but i love the work ethic I kind of had a better time in Mexico personally, but it was kind of it was kind of taxing to live in a place where stuff wouldn't work and where people were totally unreliable. And in Germany, as a person, no one promises you pretty much anything. I, I, I'm maybe I am now idealizing it, right? Maybe it's completely wrong because I have been deceived there too. But people who are studied, they're like more serious. They usually don't go into the deception that much. They just don't promise anything, period. In Mexico, everyone promises everything and don't mean a thing. So word, word is in Germany, but they just don't give it out. At least not where I come from. They just don't say the word, period. Why would I want to say anything? I have no interest in you. What? 14. 